He's the most dominant pitcher in the game of baseball. The Orioles? Mm -hmm. If the Orioles get Mason Miller this year, they win the World Series. Whoa! Five ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. What is up, my friends? Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a great weekend, but we got a lot to talk about in the baseball world every Monday. Power rankings, team of the week, player of the week. We have overreaction Monday. We're going to talk about Paul Skeens' debut with the Pirates. David Rubenstein being the owner of the Orioles and just how awesome that has been. Uh, we also have some Phillies and Braves talk and who is going to win the NL East. So a lot to talk about today. Alex, how was your weekend? Uh, Sunday is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. You have many dogs, a lot of dogs. You're a dog mom. I'll take that. I never know if that's like fully appropriate yet. Like I'm, I'm a fur, fur dog, fur mom. Fur mom? You're a fur? Furred? <laughs> fur? Fur baby? Heard it here. Mom? Alex is a furred. Uh, yeah, I think it counts. Yeah. No, it was fun, though. Like, we had, it was my mom's last kind of solo Mother's Day brunch that we had today because two of my sisters are, are prego, and we're going to have some curry babies in June and July. So that uh, that was fun. We did, like, a outside backyard mom day brunch. Love that. Which was great. Um, yeah. How was yours? Mine was great. Obviously, my mom is in Virginia. Yeah. Long way away. Uh, but FaceTime, talked for a while, caught up, just good. All good, all around. Um, it was a lot of fun. Sunday was fun. It was good catching up with her and, you know, just telling her I love her. Aw. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. That's cute. Happy Mother's Day, Mama Curry and my sisters who are about to be moms and Mama Verlander. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. We love it. Your brother actually gave your mom a nice little early Mother's Day gift with his outing this weekend. He sure did. I was epic. He sure did. Dominated. Dominated out there on the mound. Seven innings pitched. Struck out eight guys. Woo! Um, zero earned runs. It was, and it was cool. Back in Detroit. Every time he goes yeah, back to Detroit, special. it just feels like, I don't know, there's a little more, a little more behind it. Yeah. You know, it just means he spent a long, long time there. A lot of his career. Um, so every time he goes back, it's, it's just nostalgic. And he went and, and pitched great. Um, and yeah, eight strikeouts, two hit, only two hits. The first hit he gave up was a little dinker squibbler to the left side. Colt Keith. Squiggler, dinker. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, gave up one more. So only two knocks all day. Pitched really, really well. The Astros needed it. Um, by the way, won three of their last four. Offense. Offense is, uh, they have the best batting average in all of baseball. Pitchers getting healthier. Only six and a half back in the division. It's early May. I don't know. I was told the world is falling, but. We'll see. It we'll wasn't see. the world was falling. It, the The heated conversation was, do the Astros, do the Yankees own the Astros back and forth? And mm -hmm. where was your worry meter at for the Astros? I think you had them at like a four. Four. When you were talking about it last week, I said, I think six or seven. But is this, you know, is this like little run, the thing that finally turns it around for him? Here, well, Kyle Tucker's in Fuego. Yeah, dude leads is. baseball and homers. Uh, unbelievable year. Here, here's my thing. Here's what makes me happy going throughout my days, just bopping around. Okay. I think we're going to look back the 1st of October. The Astros are going to get into the playoffs and there are not a lot of people out there. And I could be wrong, okay. but there are not a lot of people out there that have stood their ground and said, the Astros are going to make the playoffs. They will be fine. They will be fine. And I have continued to say that. I do believe that I'm not just saying that my worry meter is a four out of 10. Mm. That's not a zero, but it's mm. not an eight. I, I feel like they will be fine. So I hope they make me look good because I've been, you know, sticking and sticking my neck out yeah, there for have. them for a while, believing in this team to turn it around. And maybe this is the beginning. The offense is there, obviously best batting average in all of baseball. The pitching was the massive problem with mm -hmm. health on the rotation and back into the bullpen issues with their guys that are supposed to be good. Well, they're getting better. Rotation's getting healthier. Justin's throwing great. Christian Javier came back on Saturday. Didn't throw great, but he's back. Uh, Framber looked good. So yeah, this could be, could this be. could be the, where they turn it around. All right. We'll see. Well, it's Monday. So let's get started with our overreaction Monday. If you're new to this segment, 
I'm going to give Ben some statements, and he's going to tell me if they're an overreaction or not. And we're going to get started with one of the most anticipated debuts we have had in a long time. Our first overreaction. Paul Skeens makes the Pirates a playoff team. Is that an overreaction <laughs> I, or not? I was, I am very excited and was really looking forward to talking about Paul Skeens' debut and how cool it was. But I do not like that I'm going to have to say, hell no, this does not make the Pirates a playoff team. Are you kidding me? I, they're they're better. They're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Paul Skeens and, and Jared Jones are going to be a great one-two punch. Um, but they, they, they ain't making the playoffs this year. It's not happening. Um, he still has some training wheels on, on yeah. the mound, but to, to see him in his debut. It, so in conclusion of this, yes, no, Paul Skeens does not make the pirates a playoff team. I do not believe they're a playoff team this year. I think they're a, a decent, you know, I, they've been this same team for two years now. They started off really hot last year, this year, the same, then they go down. I just don't think offensively they have enough to, to be a playoff team. But I digress. Let's talk about Paul Skeens. Yeah. That was awesome. I don't, did you watch it? Oh, did yeah. I mean, it? first first strikeout over 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Like, he was in fuego. What I love to see, too, he was so locked in. And even when he was talking about it, too, he said he kind of took in the moment when he was walking out to the bullpen. But, like, after that, just completely locked in and was really trying to be present and take it minute by minute. He doesn't sit in the dugout in between innings when he's yeah. pitching. So it was just, it was really cool to see someone that talented, that locked in. Welcome, welcome to the show, Paul Skeens. Yeah. And you know, that, that first inning, that first strikeout, he's hitting 101. He yeah. touches 102 in his Woo! outing. He's got this, it's really cool to see. So yeah. that like splitter sinker, I guess we're calling it a splinker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love that, yeah. but that's what we're calling it, I guess. Um, it's like 94 93 to 95, yeah. it legitimately moves like a changeup. So he uses that, you know, he he can use this pitch that's 95 miles an hour that moves all over the place as like a get me over strike. Yeah. He uses it as a strikeout pitch when he needs to. When it's down below the zone, it looks like a splitter. It moves like a splitter. So I was just really impressed. Um, we all knew he throws hard. He was throwing 102, but um, I, I didn't, from what I'd seen in the minors, I think he was probably he'd probably be a little disappointed in his command, his fastball command. But it just it makes me I was it's a I tweeted this. It is a treat to watch yeah. Paul Skeen's pitch. It I is. honestly felt like, man, this is really fun. Like mm -hmm. this is an experience in its own right, being able to watch him. Seven, seven punch outs and four innings in his debut comes out of the game uh with only one run across, but the uh, the bullpen ended up giving up all of yeah. his runs. So I think his final line was like three four run. innings, three earned. Yeah, three earned runs. Which uh, that difference in ERA is oh. monumental. But, yeah, but, his, his, his ERA is a little high. But he was he was nasty, and it's a lot of fun to watch him pitch. He is going to be so so good. Yeah, I mean that was. That was fun. And and I love when you have like the whole family. Obviously, he's his he's with a very talented athlete as well and his girlfriend. She like was there. she was there. Everybody was there supporting. And just to see, you know, it, it is really the whole family. This is a life dream for somebody to have that moment to finally make it to the big leagues. And it's 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 always special when you try to take a step back and remember like this is what it was all about. This does it, moment. Does it feel a little bit like MLB is trying is is they are they trying to do like well NFL is Taylor and Travis like MLB is trying to get ahead of it I mean almost, why not and like I mean no one's gonna be Taylor Swift right like that's, that's like she right. is the most popular probably music act in the world like one There's of the most popular people Taylor Swift in the world to be the most famous person in the world right yeah now. little different but I I lean in Major League Baseball lean in. Like, she's great. And she's, like, a big person on social. Like, it's a supportive other athlete partner. Like, I love this. I love all of it. Yeah. I, I they had her too. on the broadcast. I saw It was that. great. I saw that. Yeah. Very supportive. We love that. We love the support. We love support. We support Paul. Uh, all good. I, I loved watching it. Loved watching it. Okay. We're moving on to our next overreaction. Orioles owner David Rubenstein is the best owner in Major League Baseball. Ooh. Overreaction or not, Ben? Man, oh man. He was having fun this week and <laughs> Here's what I here's what I'll say. I feel like in a lot of my answers or or takes or thoughts on this show, some I go with with my heart and okay. what I feel, 
and some I'm I'm a, a realist, and I never really know which direction. Well, I'm which come way are we out. going today? I'm going to go with my heart uh-huh. and say that he is the best owner in baseball. <laughs> I think I can is guess he why. realistically the best right now? Well, he just started. Yeah. What is yeah. what has he done? Well, let me tell you what he's done. He has totally transformed the feel in Baltimore culture. Um, the the culture. Yeah. The the way he goes about his business. For to be honest, this team that everyone in the world knows mm-hmm. is super talented and young, and if handled properly, could be great for a decade. Yeah. But with the old ownership that literally came out last year and said, we got to be realistic. We're not going to be able to pay all these guys. It was like, one, sure, maybe there is a business aspect to this, but two, why are you saying that? The team's great. This guy comes in, Rubenstein comes in and changes everything. He's like, I'm from here. I love this team. Mm. Uh, They have this, how many times Mm. have I talked about the splash zone? And he was the guest splasher. He was the guest splasher out there. Uh, It's so good. So cool to see. Uh, the the people that he brought in around him, the yeah. Cal Ripken Juniors of the world, like you just know they're committed to winning and they know what they have in front of them right now. And you just have to believe that they're going to do everything in their power to keep that. So has it been proven yet? No, but I can promise you what has been proven is the culture is different. He is a different owner than most. He's willing to spend the money. They asked him, you know, how... How excited have you been to be the guest splasher? And he said, I paid $1.6 billion for this moment to happen right now, <laughs> yeah. which I love that answer as well. And if you saw a video, he legit just stood like in the bird bath in the corner with a hose, hosing down his fans yeah. and was having the time of his life. And he was so good with all the pre-social media stuff leading up to it. Like this is, this is what you want to see. You want to see an owner that is not only invested, obviously, financially with the team, yeah. but, like, personally invested. This is his hometown team. There it he is. loves this the team. The action shot. Look at him having these, literally hosing down his He was very fans. strategic about it. He was really, like, looking yeah. very strategic. And you get a splash, Love and that. you get a splash, and you get a splash. Yeah, I guess you don't get, you know, multiple billions without being strategic in how mm, you go right. about things. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, you, the reason I say yes that's still up for debate. Honestly, we'll see how he handles the business side of things and the ins and outs, but the culture feels different. Uh, being an Orioles fan feels fun. If you're a Baltimore Orioles fan, you feel great about the future of the organization. And I don't know if that was the case six months ago. Um, and if you're, if you're a fan of other teams, Mm -hmm. you're jealous, you know, you see him doing things like this and you see him bringing in the team around him and you think, well, that's what I want. Yeah. And and really, at the end of the day, as baseball fans, what do we all want? We want our team to to be invested in winning. And is that saying, like, I want my owner to spend recklessly forever? No, it's I just I want an owner that loves baseball and that wants to win and is proud of the team, not an owner that's in it for the investment and the money that he's going to make from it. And I, I think both can be. You know, obviously, you don't get into something planning to lose a bunch of money, but both can be true, right? Like, you can love baseball and get into it thinking it's a good investment, but I don't think there's enough owners out there that are actually in it as well for the part that I think is most important, which is caring about the game, caring about the sport, wanting to provide for the fans, wanting to provide for the city a good team to watch. Um, And this this is a prime example, and we have a few over the last few years. Steve Cohen with the Mets, creating a, a... positive experience is the team been as good as he wants no but they've done renovations to the stadium they've done all of these things they've added all these experiences for fans to make it a fun viewing experience and that's what rubenstein is doing now with the orioles and and i i love to see it so i'm gonna say this isn't an overreaction he's the best owner in baseball um he's got a little to prove and i'm excited to watch him prove it yeah all right right now let's get to our final overreaction statement the Phillies will win the NL East. Ooh, oh, yeah, baby. Wee. Red hot Phillies right now. Well, you know I have the Phillies winning the World Series. Yes, you do. But I did not have the Phillies winning the NL East. I thought as the last couple of years they would get in as a wild card team and then do what they do best, which is play really well in the postseason and play really well at home, despite the D-back series last year. But, um, look, I... I couldn't be higher on this team. I couldn't have been higher on the team coming into the season. Here we are in the beginning slash middle of May, Mm -hmm. May 13th. 
And I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to say this is not an overreaction. The Phillies will win the NL East. They are currently in first place. Yeah, the most wins in baseball. Most wins in baseball. They ha- they they won 28 of their first 40 games for the first time since 1993. Dang. They haven't lost a series in a in 11 series. They haven't lost for 11 straight series. That's great. That's remarkable. So, you really you, you start to think about one why did I why did I pick this team to win the World Series? I thought they had everything. Offense full of stars. Rotation. Wheeler and Nola are great in the playoffs. Add in the fact that this year, Ranger Suarez might be the best of all of them. Um, I mean, and I'll pitcher of the month. He's been fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, he was great. Uh, great, great arms in the back end of the bullpen. And I, I've thought a lot about this bullpen as well because there are a lot of arms that can get wild. Yeah. And when I think about the Phillies bullpen, I think there's a big difference for the for relief pitchers okay. when it comes to the playoffs and it comes to the crowd environment yeah like bullpen like relievers are are nuts yeah they're you just have to be. You a lot, be a they're just crazy. wackos you gotta be a little crazy so bring the playoffs on and you bring the crowd environment on and they just rise to another level yeah so they have they have arms that are so capable of of doing great in the playoffs offense mm-hmm. rotation bullpen mm-hmm. all great so I started thinking of what is the Phillies' weakness? Yeah. And when you really think about it, it's hard to find one. Mm-hmm. Second best ERA in the National League. Full team team ERA. Yeah. Tied for the second best batting average in all of baseball behind only the Astros. Offense, great. Pitching, great. Record. Best in baseball. I mean, we knew it was going to be great with Bryce Harper finally back healthy and having a full year now yeah. after getting his, was it Tommy John? Like minor yeah. Tommy John yeah, surgery? Yeah. yeah. And he's he's been great. Alec Bohm having an epic start to the year. So, I, one, I just wanted to start with the Philly side of this because yeah. I this is my World Series winner. Yep. I I picked them for a reason, and, and now I will say I believe it's not an overreaction that they will win the NL East. Mm. And I just want to talk about the Phillies. Now let's talk about the Braves, Yee. the big one. Spencer Strider's not pitching this year. Yeah. He, he was my NL Cy Young winner. I believe he was yours as yep. well. Uh, you lose a guy like that, a guy that was going to strike out somewhere between 250 and 300 guys this year, and you just take him out of that rotation. Is it still a, a good rotation? Yes. Max Fried has been so much better. Chris Sale has been – it's been a delight to see him back and pitching well this yeah. year. Um, but it's just different without Strider. And I, I think that more so levels the playing field with these two teams and the, the Phillies had the Braves number in the, in the playoffs, but now the regular season, it's just, it's different without Strider. I do. I love this Phillies team. I'm going to say it's not an overreaction. Okay. They can win in the NL East. What's the, what's their weakness? What is their weakness? There isn't one. It, it would really only be if the bats maybe got cold, but I don't see that happening because there's, there's so much depth in this lineup that someone's going to pick someone else up. Yeah, but like which yeah, one, I don't know. You know like yeah. Castellanos hasn't had a good year and the team's still the, but you know, it's like they have enough star power. If Trey Turner's not hitting Bryce Harper is, if Bryce Harper's not hitting Alec Bohm is, if Alec Bohm's not hitting yeah. JT real Muto is, That's- if Nick Castellanos isn't hitting Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Alec Bohm are, it's like, well, yeah. pick your poison with this lineup. And and then in the rotation, it's like, good luck. You got to go face Wheeler, Nola, and, and Suarez. And by the way, they, the depth in the rotation this year has been fantastic. Spencer Turnbull was incredible before Tywin Walker came back. And now Turnbull's in the bullpen, giving them some long innings. It's like they, they have a ton of depth. They mm-hmm. have great back into the bullpen arms. They have a fantastic lineup, and they have superstars everywhere you look. This team is incredible with depth. I love the Phillies. So I'm excited to see where they end up in our next segment because it is time for power rankings. Have a good feeling about them, Phillies. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's get started. At number 10, they were not ranked last week, the Royals. Royals are back. Back. The Royals have been uh, a lot of a, a pleasant surprise this year. Not a surprise in that they're better than last year, but a surprise that they are as good as they are right now. Uh, they keep winning ball games. They're twenty-five and seventeen. 
And I, I, I watched them play a couple times this past week. And it's like, you look at the lineup and it's, this isn't, it doesn't feel like luck with the Royals. It doesn't feel like, ah, uh, they're going to, they're going to come back down to earth. This sort of play feels like earth. <laughs> like, yeah. like they're there, you know, like I, I think they're a 500 or better team this year. And you look at the lineup and, um, Michael Garcia at the top, Bobby Witt, Vinny P, uh, exciting. Salvi, like the, the top four or five guys in this lineup are legitimately a lot of fun to watch, uh, a totally revamped rotation. So yeah, the Royals, the Royals aren't no fluke so far mm-hmm. this year. I, I believe in them as a team. Do I, would I pick them to make the playoffs right now? I would probably lean no, but I knew they would be better. And it's been a pleasant surprise how yeah. much better they really have been. Shows, shows you what can happen if you, you invest a little bit during yeah. the offseason, yeah. invest in your team. Okay, let's move to number nine. They are down three spots, but still first in the AL Central, the Guardians. Yeah, the Guardians are a team that um, it felt like we're due to come back to earth a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know I've used that analogy two times in two teams now, but you're in luck because we have 10 teams and I'm going to try and use that analogy 10 times. (laughs) Uh, Look, the Guardians are a good, not great team. And when they had the best record in baseball, I don't think there was a single time where I yet slid them into the top five because I wanted to see more. And I do believe they are, again, a good, not great team. The loss of Shane Bieber is going to hurt them over the long haul. Uh, I, I, the lineup's a lot of fun. Josh Naylor is, is emerging as a star in this game. Jose Ramirez is a star in this game. So there's a lot of fun pieces. I just think, uh, you know, they, they haven't been fantastic over the last week or so. And I, I, I think that's fair. And, and that's what we should expect from this Guardians team. Good, not great here at number nine. All right. At number eight, up one spot but still just behind the guardians in the standings, the twins. Yeah. So the twins are playing a lot better since they had that 12 game winning streak. The Homer sausage really did turn their season around. You know, sometimes you just need a sausage to get things turned around. The summer sausage, the 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 girthy summer sausage. Yeah. Sometimes (laughs) you just need a girthy sausage to get your season turned around. And that's what the twins have done. Um, Yeah. So now they climb from, honestly, well below 500 to now a record of 24 and 16. They're right on the heels of the guardians at this point, a half game back. Um, They've won seven of their last 10. So look, yeah, I, I know the guardians are ahead of them in the standings, but uh, it feels like they're coming back to earth a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did it again. Three for three. And the twins have played more like I was expecting them to being one of one of the best teams in, in the AL and certainly the best team in this division. I think they win the division. I think they're the better team, and that's why I have them ahead of them in the stand in the power rankings right now. All right. On to number seven. Staying at the same spot, kind of had an average week, the Cubs. Yeah. Cubbies are still there, second yeah. in the NL Central. They got back Cody Bellinger, which first game back, hits a homer. Justin Steele back, Seiya Suzuki back. The, it just feels like the Cubs are now due to to go on a run over this next little bit. We'll see if yeah. that happens. Uh, but the way they played, and I think I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this last week, but the way they've been playing without Cody Bellinger, Seiya Suzuki, and Justin like, Steele. I mean, if you were to t- if you were to say at the beginning of the year, where would the Cubs be middle of May, and they're gonna ha- they're gonna miss a lot of time with their star at players at the same time with Cody Bellinger, Seiya Suzuki and Justin Steele. I mean, those are, those are their stars, yeah, but Shota Imanaga also has like become their star. Yes. But did we see that? Do we know that was going to happen? No. So now you have a, a one, two with Justin Steele back. Yeah. You have a one, two punch in that rotation. That's so great. Tough to beat right now with a lineup. That's really fun. Michael Bush has been great. Those have been the, the saving graces for this team is Shota Imanaga, Michael Bush yeah. offensively. Um, Thank you know, I, Alzali hasn't had a great year in the back end of the bullpen, but they went and got a big pickup, which I liked, of Hector Neris, who's been good in the back end. So, yeah, the Cubs are a lot of fun right now. I have them at seven. All right, at number six, up two spots, the Brewers. Yeah, so the Brewers are in, uh, in first. A in half that game division. in first half right game, now. 24 and 16. Uh, yeah, I just, I the more I watch them, the more I like their lineup. Yeah. The more I like the back end of their bullpen, which was, it's only going to get better when Devin Williams comes back. He's been hurt all year and is due back, I think, around the All-Star break. Um, offensively, the addition of of Reese Hoskins, 
Then yeah, Christian Yelich just came back. Yelich missed a lot of time. Yelich was having yeah, a did. great year. I mean, like, look, it was it was like a a week plus of the season. But like back to looking, at least having the conversation of like, hey, the MVP belly back, like wow. And then he gets hurt, goes down, and the offense continues to be really good. William Contreras behind the plate has emerged as one of the best catchers in baseball, certainly offensively. Uh, Bryce Turang is stealing a bunch of bags, getting on base. Willie Adamas can run into two or three homers uh, any game. A lot of power out of that shortstop spot. So, yeah, I'll continue to say it as long as I need to. I was wrong about this Brewers team at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year. Uh, they they have they have been a pleasant surprise in, in my eyes and been a lot of fun to watch. I like when it's a positive, I was wrong. And I'm happy that I was wrong. Yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah. All right, let's move to our top five. At number five, in the same spot, the Yankees. The top five gets tough. Yeah, we have a lot. We're going mm, to talk our way through movement. it. Not a ton of movement here. We're going to talk our way through it, though. Okay. Because the top five is where things get really tricky, and there's a lot of really good teams in the league right now. The Yankees are 27 and 15. The Yankees are seven and three in their last 10. So Mm -hmm. they've won seven of their last 10 games. They're playing good baseball. Yeah. And what makes me excited about this team is they haven't had Garrett Cole throw a single pitch for them this year. And I was really high on the Yankees coming into the year saying this could be, you know, like is the addition of Juan Soto a big enough addition for them? And that answer in my mind was yes. And the answer to this point has been yes. He's, you know, a leading candidate for AL MVP. You picked him as the AL MVP. And 15. Yeah, he was my pick to win MVP. Mm -hmm. And I just, I I thought with a team, with a team like the New York Yankees. Yeah. And you're lying to yourself if you don't say, it just means a little more with the New York Yankees. The the bright, the the lights are a little brighter. The stage is a little bigger. You could tell. He became like, he he like walked into being a superstar. Like he was Mr. New York immediately and picked up what Aaron judge wasn't able to do at the start of the season. So the Yankees are are the Yankees. And that's why I thought going over there, if Juan Soto was able to get traded to the Yankees and last year, the Yankees having one of their worst seasons in a long, long time, if he's able to turn that around and the team make the playoffs, then I think he's automatically going to get a lot of looks for MVP because you know he's going to be good. Yeah. And then it becomes, well, they didn't add a, a ton. Of, I know this is no discredit to to Verdugo and Grisham, yeah. but he was the big addition. And if in, one player can turn that all around, it's Juan Soto. And if he's able to do it, I think he's going to be in, in that conversation for MVP. And I have him winning MVP. So th- the team is doing great, even without Garrett Cole. And I'm excited to see how good they can be come um, second half of the year yeah. in playoffs. And I mentioned, I remember mentioning that early in the year. I said, man, if this Yankee, when this, I I had them getting in the playoffs and yeah. said, just wait until Garrett Cole comes back. Then in the, ro- and then in the rotation in the playoffs, you can have Cole and, and Rodon and, and Stroman. And everyone's like, well, you think they're going to make the playoffs? They I have left. them getting to the world series. Yeah. You think they're going to make the playoffs without Garrett Cole all yes, half the year? That answer in my mind was yeah. yes. We were both high on the Yankees. I feel great about them now. But they're here at yeah. five because there's a lot of really good teams out there. There's a lot of really good teams and not a lot of movement. So still at number four, the Braves. Yeah. So the Braves are, you know, Braves entering Sunday had won four games in a row, 24 mm-hmm. and 12. Again, they are the, not again, I hadn't said this, but yeah. they're the Sunday night baseball game. We yes. record on Sunday evenings while the game is currently going on. So are they going to be... As at the time this episode comes out, will they be winning five in a row? Will they have just lost Sunday? Well, you'll know when you're listening, but I do not at this current moment. And I have them at number four. They went on a bit of a, you know, they weren't playing up to their potential, slid them down the power rankings a little bit to, yeah. to four. And now they're playing a lot better, winning four games in a row. So that's why I couldn't, I couldn't yet move the Yankees over the Braves because right when I was ready to, the yeah. Braves start firing a little bit on all cylinders, playing better. And yeah, so I kept them here at four. Right? Okay. That's where they were last week. That's where they were last week. And same with number three. The Orioles are still at number three. I think the Orioles are the best team in the in the AL East. I think the Orioles are the best team in the American League. The way they've pitched lately has been remarkable. Um, when they're not hitting, which is a rarity with this team, yeah. the pitching has been picking them up. When they're giving up a few runs, the offense has been incredible. Gunnar Henderson is so, so good. To watch play shortstop defensively is fun. Offensively, 12 homers, um, big clutch homers. Um, Adley's been good behind the plate and good offensively. Just everywhere you look, offense, great. Starting pitching, great. Bullpen, question mark for me. 
Question mark. Craig Kimbrell has been struggling. You know what would be great? What? How many prospects do you have? The team is already so good. Take some of those prospects. Mason Miller. It's going to take a boatload, but the Orioles have a boatload. And the reason wow. I say it's going to take a boatload is because Mason Miller is young. He has a lot of control, but teams have already inquired with the A's about really? him. He's the most dominant pitcher in the game of baseball. The Orioles, mm -hmm. if the Orioles get Mason Miller this year, they win the World Series. Whoa, hot take. I think so. That's what that's, take. The, that's it's, it's the one, piece It's one it. thing they're missing. Yeah, because you look at, I think if everyone stays healthy, then yeah. you're looking at Corbin Burns. Kyle Bradish has been great uh, since he came back. He's he's looked really yeah. good. Um, Means is back. Um, so Grayson Rodriguez is going to be great in the, in the postseason. I just think the postseason recipe – is different. Yeah. And I think the offense learned that the hard way last year. Oh, I think yeah. that would hopefully be a wake up for them. And they haven't proven themselves in the playoffs. The rotation will be much better. They have a one, two, three that I'm confident in, which if you've, if you've listened, I think is the blueprint having two studs and a third that's doing really well. And then it is having a seven, eight, ninth inning guy. Mm -hmm. And I can't count on that being Craig Kimbrell. That does worry me in the postseason. I can't Yanir Cano has been has been good this year, but the second half of the year last year scares me. Not having Felix Bautista is massive. So you're going to have to, in the playoffs, have to be leading a game by one run or you're tied entering the eighth inning. And in comes Craig Kimbrell, and that scares me. It is scary. You go get a guy like Mason Miller, it changes everything. Everything. I would love that pickup for the Orioles, but I have them here at three right now. All right, now we're on to our top two, and I'm guessing this is happening because they lost the series in San Diego, but Dodgers down one spot at number two. Yeah, I guess you could say it's, it, yeah. I mean, they did lose the series to yeah. the Padres. Again, it's less about them, more about the team that'll, okay. that'll be at number one. I think the, the Dodgers are going to be fine. By the way, they're not on this top 10, but... They might be 11. Shout out the Padres. Yeah. Big series win. Luis Arise. Big series win. Luis Arise has changed things there for that lineup. I knew he would. He's a totally different kind of hitter. Yeah. He's what he's what Xander Bogart should be yeah. for the Padres. A guy that's going to hit 320. And, you know, Xander's got a little more pop than Luis Arise, but a guy that's a high average guy. Yeah. And then you pair him with a Fernando Tatis and a Manny Machado that's got all the pop in the yep. world. No, now you add Luis Arise to the front of that lineup. It's gonna get He's on base. gonna get you two knocks a game at minimum. He's gonna get on base. Drive walk him off in. hit the other night in his first home game so for the Padres. Cool. It was sick. I love him so much. He's uh, he's such a great human, too. I just realized this is about the Dodgers. I went okay. on a little tangent Sorry. about the Padres, who are at eleven. But shout we out also, Padres. We also love Luis Arise, so shout Dodgers. out to him. Dodgers. Yeah. Really Dodgers. good. Really good team. Um, offense is incredible. Shohei has been raking. The pitching has been a lot of fun to watch. Tyler Glass now. Uh, Bobby Miller needs to get back. But yeah, this this team has everything also. Besides also, Teoscar Hernandez, who was like my like my shout out this yeah. week. Like reposted he's just you been... by the way. Re what you posted? He that did. Clip, he loved it. He, he thanked. It. I love. We love that. Guy. We love it. What a guy. Uh, yeah, this lineup's incredible, and I'm glad you mentioned that. A guy like Teoscar Hernandez, who you can plug in yes. at five or six in the lineup. Grand Slam is going to walk to a hundred RBIs this year. Um, four homers this week, a, yeah, grand, a grand slam. slam. Uh, so yeah, this lineup is, is great. I could go on and on about how good the Dodgers are, but I do have them at number two. Yeah. So that means number one are the Phillies up one spot. Best record in baseball right now. The Philadelphia Phillies. For the first time, take over the number one spot in my power rankings. 28 and 13, best record in baseball, best winning percentage in baseball at 683. They've won eight of their last 10 games. They've won, they've gone 11 straight series without losing one. They won 28 of their first 40 games for the first time since 1993, where is the weakness with the Philadelphia Phillies. We can go through every other of these top 10 teams and I will show you where their weakness is. Yeah. I can point to it, I can call it out, and I can say, you know what? They might they might be good enough. You know, everybody seemingly has a weakness. They can be fine. They can win the World Series with this. Where is the Phillies? You can say it's it's the 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 bullpen arms and maybe losing command a little bit, but 
man, do they have some dominant arms back there, some fun arms, a great rotation. Shout out Ranger Suarez for being a, a top three pitcher in the game of baseball to start the year this year. The offense, the tie for the best batting average in, in the uh, second best in all of baseball behind the Astros. They do it all. I love this Phillies team. I have them to win the World Series. And for the first time this year, I am moving them up to the number one spot in the power rankings, the Philadelphia Phillies. So 10 through one, we go Royals, Guardians, Twins, Cubs, Brewers, Yankees, Braves, Orioles, Dodgers, and the Phillies round it all out at number one. So I I have a feeling we're going to have a couple of these Phillies in our next segment on team of the week. So let's get right to it. You guys, let's start behind the plate with Ryan Jeffers, Ryan Jeffers, man, what a week this guy had the twins. Everybody's been raking on the twins, four homers for Ryan Jeffers behind the plate, four homers, eight RBIs and OPS of 1.184 hit 273 on the week. He's behind the dish for me. All right. At first base, Bryce Harper. Yep. Bryce Harper over there. Philly's playing great. The first Philly here on this yep. list, 375 with three homers and 11 RBIs. Bryce Harper's my first baseman. Moving to second base, Marcus Simeon. Yeah, Marcus Simeon uh, heating up, though the Rangers are cooling off. Yeah. Worst team in baseball heading into the weekend Yikes. series was the Colorado Rockies. The Rangers got swept weird. by the Colorado that was Rockies. Weird. Um, but Marcus Simeon hit 375 with two homers, seven RBIs, and an OPS just under a thousand. All right, moving over to third base, Jose Ramirez. Superstar. One of the most underrated superstars in the game of baseball. 296 on the week, four homers, eight RBIs, and an OPS of 1.099. I can't go on enough about Jose Ramirez. I, he plays in, in Cleveland, and I don't think he gets the love he deserves. He can hit for pop from both sides mm-hmm. of the plate. He steals a bunch of bases. He plays a great defense. He can hit for average. He does it all. And this week, he was he started slower this year, or, yeah, this season, but he has been heating up lately. Over to shortstop, O'Neal Cruz. Woo, baby, <laughs> O'Neal Cruz has been raking. Also, hit a homer on uh, Sunday, but that won't count for this. He hit 500 on the week. Woo. 500 with two homers. Six RBIs and a 1.526 OPS. All right, now we are moving to the outfield. And remember, this is not necessarily by position, and the order does not matter. But let's get started with our first of three outfielders. It is Kevin Pillar. Yeah, new addition to that Angels team out mm-hmm. there. Coming over from the the White Sox, so fresh that they the still, only headshot we got is still him in a White Sox, Sox uniform. But he ain't doing this for the White Sox. He's doing it for the Angels. 438 on the week with two homers, nine RBIs, and a 1.438 OPS. That'll get you on Team of the Week every Mm -hmm. single week. All right, moving to our second outfielder. All rise for Aaron Judge. He's heating up. He's heating up. Oh, this is fun to watch the Yankees right now with Soto and Judge hitting back-to-back. Judge on the week, 350, three homers, Six RBIs and a 1.450 OPS. It was only a matter of time. Mm-hmm. It was when, not if, with Aaron Judge. And now the two of those guys, back-to-back, Judge and Soto, have been remarkable. I, I think there's a world in which we watch them. We watch teammates duke it out for for a potential MVP yeah. award. Uh, I know Judge started, you know, he got out of the gate slow, so he's got some ground to make up. But if anybody can make it up, it's... Aaron Judge. Oh, yeah. All right. And then rounding out the outfield, Eddie Rosario. Yep. Eddie Rosario, Washington Nationals, 471. Three homers, five RBIs, and a 1.609 OPS. Might I remind you, this is why I love Team of the Week. Yeah. Because we're able to highlight teams and players that might not often be on here. Yeah. If we did a Team of the Month, Kevin Pillar and Eddie Rosario probably aren't going to be talked about super often, but they deserve to be shouted out for the week that they had. And they were both great. So now we're looking at an outfield that involves Kevin Pillar, Eddie Rosario, and then Aaron judge. Yeah. Which is great. Love it. All right. Let's move to designated hitter. Marcelo Zuna. Yeah. Marcelo Zuna, man, I feel like we're just going to be alternating Marcelo Zuna and Shohei Otani for the, for the DH for this. 
the majority of the year. What a year Ozuna is having on the week hit 444 with three homers, six RBIs and an OPS of 1500. Dang. He's been so, so good for the Braves this year. And uh, yeah, I really do think most all year long, there's, I think 75% of the year, we're going to have either Ozuna or, or Shohei mm -hmm. in that DH spot. That's a good bet to take. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Starting pitcher, another Philly, Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler, dominant start on the mound, seven innings, 11 strikeouts, zero earned runs, only four hits, got That's the great. win. Uh, let me say this. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Zoom in on me right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to speak because here's what's going to happen. Okay. We see the dates right there. We can yeah. all see. We can all read. May 5th to May 11th. Zach Wheeler pitched on Sunday. Didn't go well. Bad start. People really struggle to <laughs> comprehend that this team of the week goes from Sunday through Saturday. His start on Sunday did not count. So listen here and listen close. Everybody that's about to comment under this post, wherever you're seeing it, you're going to say, Zach Wheeler, bad, you're so dumb. He did an awful Sunday. It didn't count. He was great in his one start on the week. Seven innings, 11 strikeouts. Zach Wheeler. I mean, I can kind of understand, like, if you're not used to something like that, you're like, well, why wouldn't it be the Monday to Sunday? Why are you doing Sunday to Saturday? That's, that's hard question. to comprehend. And, uh, that's a good question. And it's also something, and I can acknowledge that. Yeah. Let's talk about that for okay. a Actually, let's finish Team of the Week, and then we'll talk about it for a second. Okay. Zach so, Wheeler, like, <laughs> starting pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Relief pitcher of the week, Trevor McGill. Yeah, Trevor McGill has been really good for the Brewers back into the bullpen. Hasn't given up a run in, in a, over a month. Two saves on the week, two innings pitched, uh, only two hits, zero walks, which I love, zero earned runs. The guy throws 100. Again, Devin Williams goes out. for He's an all-star closer, one of the best closers in baseball. He's hurt. Then they turn to all these different areas, um, Uribe and Piamps, and, and then it's McGill now, and you just got a guy throwing 100, not walking anybody, getting a bunch of outs back there. So shout-out Trevor McGill for how good he's been, not only on the week, uh, on the last month. So – the team this week, Ryan Jeffers, Bryce Harper, Marcus Simeon, O'Neill Cruz, Jose Ramirez, Kevin Pillar, Aaron Judge, Eddie Rosario, Marcelo Zuna, DH, Zach Wheeler, starting pitcher, Trevor McGill is my closer. All right. Who's your player of the week? Uh, I'm going to go with Bryce Harper this week. Okay. Just what a week. Yeah. An OPS of 1.215, hit 375, three homers. This team is rolling. It's, yeah. a, it's a little bit of everything, right? Okay. Like this team could not be, couldn't be playing better to this point in the year. They're great. Bryce Harper is the leader of that team offensively. Bryce Harper was seemingly born to play baseball in Philly. It is mm -hmm. just a lot of fun to watch him there. Some clutch knocks this week. Great week. Philly's in at number one in the power rankings for the first time. Harper playing great. It just all felt right. So I went Bryce Harper. What about you? Who you got? My player of the week is Aaron Judge. He is heating up. And we touched on this while we were going through team of the week. But it really felt like this was the first week that he has arrived this season, right? He's batting 350, three home runs, an OPS of 1.450. But as we all saw, Judge, Judge got off to a slow start to the season, right? He wasn't that healthy. He had a little setback in spring. Thankfully, Juan Soto was able to kind of like pick up the slack that Judge wasn't able to fully arrive at. But you guys, all rise. The Judge is back. Like he's currently leading the Yankees in home runs, which included like – the absolute bomb that he hit Thursday yeah. night, which is the longest home run in 2024 in all of Major League Baseball, 473 fit, his biggest swing of 2024. And, and you can really tell, like, the teammate, his teammates and, and everyone around, once he starts to heat up and he gets to this point, everyone knows it's just a matter of time until he just completely takes off. And that's what we're seeing right now. Judge and Harper. Judge and Harper. League. Baseball is better when the superstars are superstarring. Right? And they now the MVPs are. are back. Yeah. Sunday was Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Alex, to your mom. I think we have photos that we can put up on the wall, right? You sent one in? Did I? I had I my so. tweet up. I, I had my I, mom tweet. I tweeted one as well. Here's yeah. mine. Happy Mother's Day to the best mom I could have asked for. This was me back in 2014, I believe, Woo! when I played for the West Michigan Whitecaps, uh, single A for the Detroit Tigers organization. Uh, this was a pregame there, first game of the year. So um, that was a cool one. 
And it's Mama Curry behind me. This was uh, when she she wrote a cookbook a couple years ago, and we did a whole photo shoot for her on the beach. Her thing is whole like it's incredible. I my What's mom thing explain it. What do we yeah, so my mom does this whole. She heals through food, everything. Like you build your family around the kitchen table. The kitchen cool. table is like where we like learned about life. It's where we had life conversations. It's where we talked about each other's day. It's where we learned life lessons, like everything. Yep. And so she put this whole book together of like raising your family through food and whatnot. And this Love was that. one of the, yeah, the photos from uh, her cookbook, Well, which is great. I know it's Monday to so everyone listening. If you're listening Monday, maybe you're listening Tuesday. But happy Mother's Day to, to all the moms out there, to all the human mothers to all the the dog mothers to whatever the cat whatever you're a mother happy mother's day to everyone out the there the hopeful moms um happy mother's day from the whole flipping bat family but that does it for monday's episode we got a fun fun week ahead Always. uh if you haven't listened go back and listen to saturday with smoltz um yeah it's good week of good week of episodes we will be back wednesday we'll be back friday we'll be back saturday uh ty france is Wednesday's episode. Ooh, Ty France fine. of the Seattle Mariners, which is a fun, uh, fun guest, to, fun to get him back on as well. So thank you all for listening. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple or Spotify. Also, you can watch on Spotify. You can watch on YouTube. Shout out the no. entire YouTube family, by the way. I, I love the, the Why, YouTube. We're closing it out with the giant sausage. I do love that. I love that. Whenever you can close anything with a giant sausage, <laughs> do it. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Remember, find your bat. Find, find your sausage. <laughs> no, and flip don't it. do Peace. that.